Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this 8th short video I will give you some troubleshooting tips and analyze network traces for port based tunneling. Let's get straight into the troubleshooting for port based tunneling. Because port based tunneling is easy to set up, it's also very easy to troubleshoot. Now let me start with the commands that are available on the switch. Uh, let me move the CLI in here. So this is the switch. Um, so what we have is we have the show tunneled node server state command. And with that command you can see the port status and the, uh, the status of the tunnel node server. So whether there is a connection established between the switch and the mobility controller. At the moment there is nothing connected to the port so there is no tunnel. Uh, now let me change that and connect something to that port. So I'm connecting something to port 2 now. If I do a uh, show tunnel node server state again you can now see that the port status is complete. So the tunnel is established. Now let me change one of the VLAN memberships from untagged to tagged and let me show you what happens. So I'm on VLAN 110 now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assign port 2 as tag member of VLAN 110. Okay. Um, now if I do the show tunnel node server state again, you can see that the state has changed from complete to in progress. Um, so what that means is that um, tagged VLANs uh, with port based tunneling is not supported. So it, it only allows you to assign untagged uh, ports, you know, ports with untagged VLAN membership um, to a port based tunnel. Um, another reason why you would get the in progress status is that um, so that's when you have a VLAN configured on your switch but you have not configured that VLAN on the mobility controller um, so if that's the case you also get an in progress uh, status now let me move back uh, that VLAN membership to untagged so untagged 2 and let me show you the port status again. And now you can see that the port status has changed to complete again. So that means that the tunnel has been established again. So important is that you assign an untagged VLAN to the port on which you have tunneled node server enabled. If you want to have multiple tagged VLANs on a port with dynamic segmentation, you can achieve that with user based tunneling. So, and I will cover that um, later on in the video series. So no worries, you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll get into that as well. Um, so, and that's really it for the troubleshooting part on the switch. Uh, set, uh, the setup is very easy. So most of the things are happening on the mobility controllers and on clear paths. Okay, let's move to the um, mobility controllers. And you can see the connected clients here. Um, so I've got three, one doing Mac auth, one doing 802.1x and one doing captive portal. Um, now, one important thing is that for dynamic segmentation, you, you need to have the appropriate licenses installed. Um, now, the licenses you can see here in, on the Mobility Master, you can see the global license pool here. Now, for each switch, you need a... AP license so you can also see that one license is used by the switch but the switch is also using the policy enforcement license and the RF protect license now let me show you what happens if I remove the PATH and RF protect license so if I only have AP licenses So really what happens if you are using um, roles that include um, you know, stateful firewall uh, uh, rules, um, then so those stateful, stateful firewall rules, they are using these PEF licenses. Uh, 
So if you don't have any PEF licenses, those uh, firewall rules can not be applied anymore. Now let me show you what happens if um, you know if if uh, that is the case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to revert back one of the profiles, the 802.1x profile. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the downloadable user roles. And um, what I'm also going to do, just is commit this, the changes. And the other thing that I'm going to do is for the authentication server group, uh, I'm going to select the internal database again for uh, for authentication. Okay, um, so when I use the internal database, um, I have the uh, internal user that I'm using um, for the mobility uh, master, right? So, uh, so I've got this employee user here, and I'm using the role authenticated. Okay, so that's the role authenticated. Now, what happens that role authenticated contains uh, policies that are using that PEF license. So let me just put it to the test and no, let me just first uh, show you the client what happens. Okay, so I've got the client overview here, it's connected and I'm using this downloadable user role. Now if I authenticate as employee, I should get the authenticated um, uh, role here, right? Um, but what you will see is that I'm not getting that authenticated uh, role. Let me just show it. So I've logged on as employee uh, again, and now what you see is I should be getting the authenticated role, but I'm not. I'm getting the logon role, and that is because the PEF licenses and the RF Protect licenses have not been activated. Now, so let me change that back again. Go to the global license pool and re-enable those licenses. Okay, and then let me reconnect the client and see what happens. So I should be getting the authenticated role once I have been authenticated. So let me just log in again. Um, okay, so I'm logged in and let me check the client here. It's still saying log on. It might take a while. Uh, let me just... Um, so the other thing I can do is... Um, it could be that the client is cached. So let me just do a... So that's another troubleshooting tool on the CLI. Uh, let me just move that CLI so that you can see it. So this is the uh, mobility controller. I can do a show user. And you can see all the users with all the relevant information. Okay, now what I can do is I can do an AAA user delete 10.120.1.15. So that will remove that user from from the list. Okay, um, let me just uh, show that user list again. So I should have two clients now. Now let me reconnect the client and log on again. Let me check what the status is of that client now and you can see that it is authenticated now see so um, so it's really important to have those licenses installed um, especially if you want to use the um, the stateful firewall functionality now let me show you another um, command on the mobility controller that is really very useful. Let me enlarge the screen a little bit because there's quite some information there. So if I do a show user, you get an overview of all the users that are connected. And what I can also do is uh, I can also do a show user IP and then I just enter the IP address of that user. I just get a loads of information about that uh, user being connected. I can see all the sessions that it's running. Um, I can get the role information, the VLANs that are uh, that I'm using, the uh, SSIDs. I mean, so I, there's there's a whole bunch of information 
here that is related to the uh, to that client and will help you troubleshoot uh, connectivity issues so that's a real cool tool now uh, another uh, another command that you can use is if you have issues with the tunnel node um, what you can do is issue the command show tunnel uh, was it tunneled node state okay so you can see here that uh, so it's very similar to the tunnel node state of the switch but you can see here that for these three ports the tunnel state is, is complete and you can also see the VLANs that are enforced but it's also a cool command now let's move to clear pass um, so uh, so for clear pass really your best friend is the access tracker um, so a couple of other things you could check is the event viewer so for example um, if you have if you're having trouble uh, connecting your mobility controller uh, for radius to the uh, to the clear pass server it could be for example that you have the um, radius secrets uh, wrongly configured um, then you will get uh, a, an event in the event viewer okay if that is working then your uh, next step is go to the access tracker and really access tracker uh, reveals you a lot of stuff so for example um, so uh, in, the, in the previous video I showed you uh, the captive portal and for that captive portal and so let me just show you that configuration of that service um, so I, what I did is for the authentication I configured the PAP protocol as authentication protocol now what you can see for example in the access tracker is if you have a look at the captive portal entry um, you can see the authentication method as PAP so uh, so if you so, so if you would have things like authentication methods missing or you know if, if you have issues like that you will also you will always get like an alert um, and in that alert information you will see what's uh, what's going wrong so that's a that's a really cool uh, feature in in ClearPass. So Access Tracker is your best friend, and that's pretty much it for troubleshooting on the Mobility Controller switch and ClearPass. As said, port-based tunneling is pretty straightforward and easy to troubleshoot with some simple tools and commands. Now, one of the other things I forgot to mention is that uh, you could also so if you are using Captive Portal, um, again you have to really make sure that you're using a public uh, certificate there's a lot of things that can go wrong with the certificate so make sure that you have that certificate installed correctly on clear pass and on the mobility controllers now let me move to the network trace uh, section uh, for that I've got a client here um, and so what I'm going to do here is I am going to capture packets between clear pass and the mobility controller um, capture packets between the switch and the mobility controller and I'm going to f uh, catch all the UDP destination port 8211 packets now UDP port 8211 is a defined um, packet type and it's assigned to puppy and puppy is the protocol that is used to exchange control plane information between switches access points and mobility controllers um, originally puppy was developed for the Aruba wireless solutions but with dynamic segmentation uh, this protocol has been added as control plane protocol for uh, for the dynamic segmentation so of course it will be hard to read the content but I can show you uh, some information that the hater a data the data header is sending that you can match with the configuration now let me just first um, stop the trace and start it again and then let me just connect one of the ports so that the tunnel is established okay so you can see some puppy exchange here let me stop the trace so you can see an exchange between the switch and the mobility controller and some acknowledgements coming here another request being sent and another response from the mobility controller now one of the things you can distill from the data header 
from uh, from the puppy packet is the MAC address of the switch. Now let me just show you that uh, that MAC address. Uh, if I do a show system on the switch, you can see that MAC address here F four zero three four three, and what you can see here is F four zero three four three. So that's your MAC address of the switch. So you can see that there's an exchange there. Um, so and that's and that's really uh, you know that's that's really the only thing you can see in the Puppy Exchange. That's really straightforward for port-based tunneling anyway. Okay, now let's see if we can run some data across the network. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to connect an 802.1x client to the network, um, and I'm going to check out what's happening uh, on the packet trace side. What I've done is I have negated the Puppy protocol and GRE packets. So the first thing I'm going to look for is the generic radius packets. So let me just start the trace and then connect the client and then log in. And you can see the radius access request uh, being sent from the mobility controller to the ClearPass server and the response coming back from the ClearPass server with all the relevant attribute pairs, uh, all the relevant VSAs. So that's that's something that you can uh, look at as well. Of course, you have this this full a EAP exchange as well. Now let me show you those EAP packets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that GRE and add an EAP filter. So I want to show the EAP packets. And so you can see that uh, request identity here coming from the client and uh, all the responses. So that's that's cool stuff. So and at the end you can see this EAP success frame. So that's that's also working. Um, now for the GRE traffic. Mm, let me remove the EAP filter and add the DHCP filter. So DHCP. Um, because you know uh, just this so this is just to avoid the screen being filled with too much data, you can see the DHCP request and acknowledgement, and that, that shows you all the relevant data. So really, what I want to show you is that uh, I am using the um, uh, GRE protocol here. So it's a GRE packet. Uh, you can see the source and destination. There's also a 802.1Q uh, field in here. You can see that. And remember, so this is the 802.1x client, so you can see that it is VLAN 120. And then you've got this full uh, IP packet, so that's a UDP packet um, requesting an IP address. So it's put P request, uh, you get all the, uh, all the relevant data here, so it, this client is requesting IP address um, 1.15, and then the server well, actually, this, so this is the router. The router is responding back with an acknowledgement. So that's uh, so that's really it. I mean, so so that's all GRE. And that's all for now. In the next video, I will show you some. Uh, oh well, I will start with some simple user-based tunneling scenarios, and then work up to more complex configurations. So thanks so much for watching, thumbs up if you liked the video and if you have any suggestions, ideas or questions please let us know and don't forget to subscribe to the ABC Networking channel. See you later and have a great day.